Hello. In this talk, we're going to consider the types of braking systems used on West Somerset Railway trains. There are three types, hand brakes, the vacuum brake, and the air brake. Now, this talk isn't going to deal with the details of how they work or how to use them in practice. This is the first talk about braking. It's going to be descriptive. And there'll be later talks that deal with the vacuum brake, working unfitted freight trains, working air brake trains and the like. But let's start with a description. Firstly, most vehicles on the West Somerset Railway have a handbrake. So certainly all the locomotives, all freight brake vans and freight vehicles, and passenger brake vehicles. Passenger vehicles that are not brakes generally do not have a handbrake because they aren't left lying around singly um, with any regularity. So a complete passenger coach with no brake vehicle in it doesn't have a handbrake. And if it, if it has to be left on occasion during works or temporarily in the siding, then we use wooden chocks under the wheels to hold it in place. But it's relatively unusual that an unbraked passenger coach would be left on its own. That's not so true of freight vehicles, goods vehicles, because the nature of them is that they were designed to be taken off a train, left in a siding, and so they will have a handbrake. The handbrakes on goods vehicles are two particular types. They're either a lever type or a wheel type. And the old types of good, goods vehicles tend to have a lever type handbrake majority of them look like just a lever. The vehicle you're looking at is a lever braked goods wagon of a standard type. You can see the lever on the right hand end. Always the handle is white painted, the idea so that a shunter easily can find that handle in a busy goods yard or a goods yard at night. There's a resting notch at the top for the lever to, to rest in and not be applied to the wheels. And with this type, the lever is pushed down and then pinned down. You can see that there is a pin hanging on a chain next to the lever, and the lever will be pinned down into an on position. In fact, if you want to increase the braking force, a shunter would use a thing called a brake stick. And that's a piece of wood. Here's an example. It's a piece of wood about the same size and length as a baseball bat, and it has a rounded handle, but the other end is squared off. It's a square shape, and that can lever between the brake lever and the rest of the brake gear to depress the brake lever more fully, to put the brake on more forcefully before it's pinned down. There is a slightly different type of lever handbrake, and we have a couple of examples of these on the West Somerset Railway, and they're called a Thompson handbrake. And you can see that there's a sort of handle and a round disc at the right hand end of the underframe of the wagon we're looking at now. And it has a ratchet mechanism underneath. So you just push this handle down, and you'll feel a ratchet action as you do, and that puts the brake on, on the vehicle. And they were thought to be more practical for regular shunting. Then you just literally just pull up the handbrake and the brake comes off. All our goods brake bands have a handbrake inside, so you wind those on. Here we're looking inside a brake band now, so it's a brake. These are called a brake standard because it stands up. You're looking at the inside of an LMS type brake van and they have a wheel. We have a couple of Great Western brake vans. Now they have also a brake standard, but instead of a wheel, they have a horizontal bar with an upstand at one end, and that was the Great Western version. And it works in just the same way that it takes probably three or four turns from off to on, and you have to wind it down and then pull against it to get a good a good on on the brakes. In passenger brake vans, we also have a brake standard and a wheel type handbrake. Now one of the issues with passenger brakes is to make sure that the brake is fully off because the train will be being worked for the vacuum brake which we'll come on to in a moment. 
And we need to make sure that nobody's left the handbrake on because that could mean that the wheels are dragging and you can scrape a flat onto the wheel of a vehicle if you drag it along with a handbrake on. So most of our passenger brake vans on the West Somerset Railway have an alarm, an audible alarm, that if the vacuum brake is active and if there's a vacuum in the system and the handbrake is still screwed on, an alarm will sound. So hopefully the guard can't send the drain away with the handbrake screwed on. We have a few more modern wagons, dogfish, ballast wagons, on the lower right hand side has a white wheel handbrake down at that level. You mustn't get confused with a ballast wagon with the three wheels that are used to drop the ballast and those are up on top on the platform. Both the older type wagons with lever handbrakes and dogfish with wheel handbrakes will have a wheel on both sides of the wagon. So you can put the handbrake on from either side of the wagon, which is jolly important if you don't want to have to walk right round a train or stop a vehicle quickly. And I'd mentioned that most locomotives have handbrakes. In diesel locomotives, they're generally in the cab. And on steam locomotives, the handbrake is generally not on the locomotive, but on the tender. So those are handbrakes. Now let's move on to the vacuum brake. Now this is the system that we use our internal passenger trains. It's a legal requirement that passenger trains must have what's called a continuous brake. So a brake that runs right throughout the train and that has a number of advantages. A particular one is if the train breaks apart, the coupling fails somewhere along the train, the train will come to a stop because that brake pipe has been interrupted. Traditionally there were two systems in the UK, either vacuum or air. Vacuum works at a lower pressure than air and is to some extent more suited to steam engines. Steam engines can create a vacuum, they can suck the air out of a pipe with a thing called an ejector. A device usually mounted in the cab of a steam engine that uses the passage of steam to suck air out of the brake pipe. And that works well with a steam engine. To create the extra pressure that's needed for an air brake, a steam engine generally needs an air pump. We've had some visiting engines, most recently a USA class engine that had a big air pump mounted on the front of the engine. A number of other types of engines have them mounted on the side or near the cab. It tended to be railways that had lots of stop and start, lots of stations a short distance apart, tended to choose air brake in the 1910s and 20s as their operating system because brakes could go on and off very quickly and therefore it was more suitable for their type of working. The main line railway companies tended to choose vacuum brake because you would tend to run a good number of miles before you needed the brake. And for all sorts of reasons, vacuum brake was cheaper and required less equipment than air brake. That's changed, of course, on the national network. Air brake is more powerful and it operates, as I said, as I've said, at higher pressure. So mainline companies more recently have chosen to use air brake. There are different systems. There's a thing called electro-pneumatic brake, which the Southern Railway used for suburban services. And there are more complicated electric electronic brakes, things like the West Code brake, which we don't fortunately have to be bothered with. As far as the vacuum brake is concerned, it's created by the steam locomotive at the front. The guard has what's called a setter, so he's able to open the vacuum brake pipe in his guard's van and, uh, and apply the brake. But during the normal running, the driver has a controllable valve into which he can let air into the vacuum brake and put on a controllable amount of brake when he's running the train. The driver's brake valve on a Great Western engine is relatively easy to spot because it usually has associated with it a brass fitting known as a pepper pot, which is a brass fitting with lots of holes in it to let the air through. And so if you look in a cab, you'll be able to see the driver's brake valve relatively easily. All the guard can really do is make an emergency stop. Our 
DMU that we run on the line, the Class 117 DMU, is a vacuum brake vehicle. And you'll hear very clearly when the driver is driving uh, the DMU. You'll hear him stopping at a station and hear the whoosh of the air into his brake valve that he can control. If you go up and sit near the front of a DMU, you'll hear that operating. See the signal man there with it in his hand? Can't see any passengers, and that's it, that lady. No, I think she's a member of staff. We do also have some freight vehicles that are vacuum braked. As freight got faster and faster through the 20s and 30s and 40s, to run trains faster, you had to be able to stop them fast. And the only way to do that was to give them braking systems on each wagon. And we have some wagons that are fitted with vacuum brake. And thereby comes a bit of railway jargon, because they're referred to as fitted wagons. And some really high speed freight trains from the 30s had to be composed of all fitted wagons. The alternative, if you weren't running at quite such a speed, was to have a mixture of fitted wagons and not fitted wagons. Now, how does that work? Because how does the vacuum get through to the fitted wagons if you've got wagons in between that are not fitted? Well, there's an intermediate type of wagon, which is called a piped wagon or a three piped wagon. It doesn't have a vacuum braking system itself. But what it has is a pipe that conveys the vacuum past that particular wagon. And you can couple brake vehicles either side of it and they can still be affected by the driver's brake valve. So you can get some brake force. What traditionally railways tended to do was to group all the fitted wagons just behind the locomotive. And that was referred to as a fitted head. So the driver would have maybe a 20 or 30 wagon goods train, but he could have a half a dozen or so wagons at the front of the train right behind the locomotive. And they are referred to as a fitted head, which gave him a bit more control. Our two Great Western towed brake bands that we have on the line are not fitted. They are piped vehicles. Both of them have a setter in which the guard can apply a brake himself if he wants to, but they are not of themselves braked. And that was normal for quite a lot of Great Western goods wagons. So that's vacuum. The last type of brake that we need to take account of is air brake. Whereas a vacuum brake works by sucking air out of a tube that runs down the length of the train, air brake works by pressurising uh, a pipe or a tube that runs the length of the train. And it actually works, if you think about it, a vacuum, the force in a vacuum can only be one atmosphere or less. Air brake works at several atmospheres, so it can put more force down the, the length of the train. It therefore needs a thinner pipe, and you'll see that air brake pipes at the end of a train are much smaller than vacuum pipes and it can propagate that braking effect much more quickly down the train. We have one set of coaches on the West Somerset Railway that is dual braked. So it can either be worked as a vacuum braked set of coaches or as an air braked set of coaches. And those are generally the coaches that you will see painted in blood and custard. And we use that to keep competency up on our staff on working air brake trains. Because when we get trains in from the national network, either excursion trains or stone trains, they're generally air braked. And it's useful to have our staff competent in working air brake trains. Diesel locomotives won't have an ejector because they don't have steam, but they generally have what's called an exhauster to pull air out of a vacuum pipe to create vacuum to work the vacuum brake and they'll have a compressor or an air pump to create air pressure to work air braking systems. So we've thought about the three types of braking systems. We've talked about hand brakes, we've talked about the vacuum brake, 
and we've talked about the air brake and we've thought about fitted wagons and piped wagons and fitted heads that's an introduction to braking systems and future videos will look at how the vacuum brake works and how unfitted freight trains are worked so how the guard has to use his brake band at the end of the train to control a goods train that's composed of unfitted wagons but we'll come to that in a future video thank you for listening <laughs>